Two nights before Christmas, the work was on cue. All the presents were wrapped, just the labels to do. Santa's sleigh had been painted a fire engine red, and around it the reindeer grazed hay as they fed. Elves and dwarves took it easy with the hard yakka done. They were having a smoko, playing poker for fun, when Santa appeared with a wine case and book, and smiled at them all a benevolent look. No one ever imagined the havoc they'd wreak as they gathered around then to hear Santa speak. My dearest companions, dwarves, fairies and elves, you each have good cause to be pleased with yourselves. Just the labels tomorrow, then your work is complete, and for all this hard graft you deserve a small treat. I've brought out this case of champagne that I found, which was gathering dust in the vault underground, and tonight after supper you shall have a soiree, a few drinks round the fire at the end of the day. In this book that I hold, I have numbered the toys and put names and addresses of good girls and boys. When we match them tomorrow, your work will be done in an hour at the most. So tonight, have some fun. Then, placing the dusty old case on the snow, he left, beard a flutter, with a cheery ho ho. Father Christmas, your eyesight is not what it was. You should see your optician, and soon, Santa Claus, the dusty old crate you unearthed from the vault, held twelve-year-old scotch of the best space-side malt, and you really can't blame the dwarf, fairy and elf for ensuing disasters. You must blame yourself. For supper... A steaming hot, rich reindeer stew, a favourite of Santa and his elfin crew, since Blitzen and Donder were victims of lightning, in a storm months ago when the weather was frightening, throughout the long winter so cold, dark and drab, their favourite was stew, or else Donder kebab. But tonight was more special than any before, for the dwarves and the elves had a party in store. The first whisky bottle was broached and passed round, and they smiled with delight at the treasure they'd found. A liquid, though cold, which was warm to the taste and glowed in their bodies right down to the waist. A gold-coloured nectar, which gods themselves sup. With the next bottle open, each held out his cup. Now sprites are teetotal, as everyone knows, And it's only with practice that tolerance grows. Quite new then to spirits, it has to be said that the alcohol went straight to everyone's head. At first all was merry with laughter and song, but at six bottles down things began to go wrong. The elves cuddled fairies and grew quite possessive. The dwarves by degrees grew more loud and aggressive. They tried to snatch bottles of scotch for themselves to drink without sharing with fairies and elves. Then a fight started up over what is unclear, but a dwarf punched an elf on the point of his ear. Then up jumped a fairy to pull the dwarf's hair, and the elf hit them both on the head with a chair. This fracas encouraged a general brawl, and mayhem broke out in the communal hall. Any sprite not laid low by a punch or a kick was doubled up drunk, being wretchedly sick, and this was the scene on which Santa walked in, when disturbed from his sleep by the terrible din. And here, gentle reader, my narration must pause, for the sake of the image of kind Santa Claus, His barrack room language I dare not repeat, as he broke up the fight with his whip and his feet, and drove all his helpers out into the snow, using words I would not wish young children to know. One dwarf, name of Legless, staggered blindly away, and stumbled still drunk on the fresh painted sleigh. There he slept for an hour till he woke in great pain, hung over and frozen and cursing the rain, 
hypothermic. He knew that he soon would expire unless he could dry himself warm by a fire. He knew that his zippo would light at a touch, but he needed some tinder, dry paper or such. In panic he searched, and the last place to look was under the dash where he found Santa's book, the book in which all the good kids were recorded and appropriate gifts with which they'd be rewarded. The pages, he tore them and rolled them up tight, threw them under the sleigh and then set them alight. The paint on the sleigh starts to bubble and burn. Oh, the whole bloody sledge is a raging inferno. Suffice it to say, Legless lived through the night, but death compared sweet to his subsequent plight. The thumbscrew, strapado and rack were employed to ensure his longevity wasn't enjoyed, for thus it was Santa Claus vented his ire on the arsonist dwarf who had started the fire. Then Santa called Rudolph and choked back a tear as he told him that Christmas was cancelled that year. But Rudolph was smarter than most of his breed. You could build a new sleigh, sir, if that's all you need. The crates with the presents are all made of wood. We could knock up a sleigh, sir. I'm sure that we could. But sadly, the ledger they couldn't replace. And Santa said, wiping the tears from his face, It's no good this Christmas we'll have to abandon. Then Rudolph said, Let's drop the presents at random. And that's what they did on that cold Christmas night as they flew over chimneys, hurling gifts left and right. So the well-chosen present, selected with care, when you open your parcel just may not be there. If something cheap Tawdry or tasteless you find It may not be you Santa Claus had in mind It's just that the ledger destroyed in the flames Matched all the appropriate presents and names Faint lines on charred paper in far Greenland snow Show the gift you deserve But the cold winds that blow from the pole to the north Or the bleak Arctic tundra Have gathered them up and have strewn them asunder. Since that which was written I cannot relate, except with good grace what was granted by fate, for the coin that is chance has another side too, someone with a much worse gift intended for you.